All right. So did anybody have any trouble? Yes. Yes. I know. Aren't you proud of me? I remembered. It took a lot. In fact, I had to stop recording my last class because we got ourselves in trouble. All right. I'm going to ask I'm recording. You can't ask when I'm recording. Yeah, wait till I stop recording. Okay. So, last class we had the assignment. What did we do? Gave reasons as to why we chose the good website, what was good about it, who they were marketing to, the who, what, why, whatever it was. And then we turned around and we did the same thing with the bad website, correct? Mm -hmm. Did anybody have trouble figuring out why? Or who, or what, or all the things? Now, some did because you got points taken off. The majority of you did fine with it, right? Okay. So, as we are approaching our redesign, we're going to create a mood board. With this, there's a lot of things we're going to have to think about. So, as we are thinking about redesigning the bad website, I want you to think about the bad website that y'all chose. Speaking of, who in here had chosen Arnold's? Guess who I ran into at the bar the other night? The guy from Arnold's. So I'm sitting there. And this, I want y'all to understand something. So I sat there with him. We're friends. Like, we hang out a good bit anyway. And I started laughing when I saw him walk in. And I was like, hey, buddy. Come here. He was like, oh, God. Because he knows me. Like, he knows I'm silly. I'm Like, we have a good time. So I was like, come here. Have a seat. I need to talk to you. He's like, what's up? And I said, well, do you remember where I work? He goes, you work at Tri-County. And I said, yeah, that's right. Good. Good job. I'm proud of you. Do you remember what I teach? He was like, uh, no, not really. Because <laughs> some of the kids that work there work in like, they go to school here too, but they all work on, they go up in the nursing program. And I was like, well, this semester I'm teaching web design. He was like, okay. And I said, well, right now, I'm teaching them to choose good versus bad websites. He was like, uh-huh. I said, do you want to guess where your website came up at? And he was like, oh, no. I said, yeah, yours was submitted as a bad website. He was like, are you kidding? I was like, mm-mm. That's pretty much what I said. And he goes, oh, are you serious? I was like, yeah. I said, buddy, can I ask a question? Who the hell is doing your website? He was like, oh, man. We paid this guy $1,700. I thought he was about to say, like, I did. No. $1,700 for that website. If you go pull it up, if you pull up Arnold's website, you will notice that it is a pre-designed website. Basically, they go in. It's a plan that anybody can buy. And you just plug in the stuff. I said, buddy, I could have fixed all that for less than $300. Easy. And a lot quicker. And it would have looked better. Now, the film, like the videography that they did on the site looks amazing. But the rest of it looks like shit. And that's what I told him. He started laughing. I was like, please, please tell me that you're not going to keep going with this guy. He's like, yeah, in fact, we're we're getting ready to, to change it out to somebody else and redesign the website. I was like, good. Well, because I pitched the fit on Friday. Do what? Oh, I was giving, I was giving him, because we're friends, so I was giving him help about it. I was like, buddy, friend, pal, you own four restaurants, four, and this is what your website looks like. Liberty, Powdersville, and Belton. So, yeah, I was giving him, and then I had to buy him a drink because I was not very nice. So, you know, fun times. 
but seventeen hundred dollars to plug into a pre-made design. Think of how much you could made redesigning yourself. All right, so these are things to consider. Anywho, do y'all remember the 10 principles that we talked about last class? Vaguely, somewhat, maybe, maybe not. not at all. Well, look, I'm gonna help you because I care about y'all so much. Look! I put them on the board for you. These are important. Don't forget them again. Take a picture if you have to. Okay? When you're thinking about your redesign, because guess what? That's what we're doing. We're redesigning. You're going to need to know all these things. All right? You're going to need to make sure that you are keeping it simple. Simplicity is going to be best. The design should not distract from the purpose. The aesthetics need to work for the attended audience. You're going to have to do some research. Some of y'all's research could show that you didn't do the research. Please look in your rubrics as I'm grading your stuff to see what feedback I'm giving to you. Do you know that yesterday I spent most of my time with emailing back people that had no clue why they got the grades they got on certain subjects? And there are some people in here who I've had before who complained about their grades, but never actually did anything to fix their grades from previous classes with me. So if you start emailing me at the very end of the semester, I'm not doing anything for you. But if you start trying to fix things now, I will work with you. Capish? All right, uh, that's cool. That was perfect timing. Okay, so aesthetics, they have to work for the client. Not only do you need to work for the people who are the audience, but you've got to work with the client too because the audience is not the only people you're trying to please. You have to please the client too. And guess what? The client's the hardest person to work with. Trust you me. Okay? Clients are awful. Usability and functionality has to be on point. If it's not user-friendly, guess what you're going to do? You're going to lose the audience. How long is the attention span of the audience? Eight seconds. To be exact, it's 8.25 seconds. I did additional research to keep going. All right. Observe and honor web conventions unless they get in your way. Clear visual hierarchy. So you need to show what's important, especially when it comes to e-commerce. So if you're going to sell things online, you need to show the latest and greatest thing first. Create emphasis to underscore what you want people to do, but don't be cheesy about it unless that's the point of your site. Okay. And then you might win people over for being cheesy. Like my whole persona, literally. Okay. So clarity, kind of think about that man's from the man from Mars. If a man from Mars can understand it, then you're good. And then text, it needs to be easy to read, easy to scan most of the time. Okay? Everybody with me? Okay. So let's look at some examples. Art Institute of Chicago. Before, their website looked like this. <laughs> Can you read it? Not really. Not really. So on the old site, and some of this you don't know because y'all can't pull up the old site, but it was a fixed width. So no matter how big or how small it was, it was not going to change. So if it was a large site, fine, I could sort of read the context. But if it was on a phone, I wasn't going to be able to see everything because it was going to be too wide. Um, the navigation used large, semi-opaque drop-down menus. They were huge six slide carousel in the center. So those pictures would be on a carousel, um, but they never got any smaller. So if I tried to use it on a cell phone, I was not gonna be able to. The footer menu in the small font, y'all see that here? Yeah. Linked to various pages, plus the menus opening, or menu, the museum's open times and social menu 
desktop social media's <coughs> profile icons. So the visual hierarchy did not meet or match the user needs, right? So most of the time, if we're looking to go to the artists to Chicago, what is one of the main things we're gonna be looking for? Times. Maybe times, Address. maybe the location, right? These are things that are gonna be kind of important, but the menu is where that's all gonna be. But on that first page, where was all the menu stuff? It was all at the bottom in the small boxes. That's not really gonna help us. Visually, that's not in front of our faces, right? So the second site, the new site here, not only is it visually more appealing and the opacity is a little bit better so you can still see the image behind it, but now the white pops against that dark opaque background. But now the menu has been moved up to the top so you can see the buttons better and it's right there at the very top. So you're not having to scroll to find what you need. Does everybody see that? Perfect. MailChimp. The before, it was already strong. It was actually a good website overall, but the problem with it, it had no personality. MailChimp is known for their little weirdness, I guess is a good way to put it. They were quirky is a good way to put it, okay? They just need to distinguish themselves from other people in the industry. So afterwards, they did this. They did the bright yellow. They had their little drawings. That's going to make them stand out from other people, okay? So they completely rebranded with color, fonts, artwork that emphasized their quirky style. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. You're going to remember that yellow website more than you would remember that just plain white website. Y'all see kind of how that's working? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the visual redesign process, there's a lot of steps to this. So I kind of think about this with me. You got to evaluate the current design. So the first impressions, their usability, and the three questions. What are the three questions? Who, what, Who, what and how, right? So you got to think about those things. We've got to obtain any branding specification from the client as well as any brand requirements that or any design requirements that they have. Maybe they have specific drawings they want you to include in their type of branding. Maybe they use a certain type of typography that they want us to include. We'll have to think about those things when we're doing their rebrand or their redesign. So you have to keep all those things in mind. So you would create a mood board, which is something we're going to do. And once you create that mood board, you're going to obtain client feedback. Okay. So you kind of, with the mood board, you're going to kind of put together some color ideas, some visual aspects to kind of how you want it to look, just giving them an overall feel. So your mood board is going to kind of give them the mood of the site, more or less. Okay. Now, once you get the client feedback, if there's some things they want to change, you're going to refine those changes and then represent it to them and see if they have any additional feedback or if they're good with it. And you're gonna go back and forth with them until everything is perfect for them. That might take a few steps. Sometimes they're undecided and that takes a hot minute. My brother is one of those. I actually gave up on him as a client. I was like, you're gonna have to find somebody else. Me and you, no, okay. Other people I can work with, my brother, is he talks down to people and I don't do that. Okay. Plus his concept is helpful. So you're going to obtain the client approval. Make sure that you have that in writing. This is approved. Okay. Then you're going to create a sketch. Now, if you are good at drawing, if you are great at doing lineage, fantastic. Draw it out. My lines are horrific. So I always do my lineage on like Illustrator. I never do it on a drawing because my lines are awful. It looks like a child drew it, okay? So I'm gonna create a wireframe and a wireframe is literally just boxes and lines. There's no color, there's no illustrations, there's no pictures, no words. It's just boxes and lines to show where your images would be, where your logos might be, 
and where your text will be. But it's just black and white lines and boxes to show them a basic skeleton of what the site will look like. And you're going to, once again, go back and forth to the client until they are approving everything that you are laying out for them on the site. Okay. Any questions about where we are here? Everybody kind of with me? Okay. Y'all were so much quieter than my first class. We didn't even get this far. We were still at the like, first page still at this point. Okay. So now, once they've approved your wireframe, so of course you have your mood board. Now you have your wireframe and everything's approved. So you've got two approvals at this point. You're going to go ahead and get the photography they like. You're going to get the illustrations, logos, icons, any content that they want. And you're going to start plugging this in to your design. Okay. This is where we create a mock-up or a prototype. Now, a mock-up, the difference between a mock-up and a prototype, a mock-up is a visual demonstration that does not work at all. And a prototype physically works to where you can click on buttons and it'll go to their next pages and stuff. Um, but it doesn't, it's not a live site. Prototypes are done in like XD, Adobe XD. So you're going to create a mock-up or a prototype so they can see kind of how it's going to look, how it's going to be seen. This is where you add your colors, your images, your icons, so they can physically see what it's going to look like. All right. And once again, you go back and forth with the client for approvals. Usually at this point, it's going pretty smooth because you already got the hard part taken care of. So at this point, they're like, I like it. It might be a change or two here where you have maybe they didn't like this photo on this page and you're just switching it out with another one. That simple. All right. So you get the final visual assets of everything they want. And then you put it all on the website. You code it into the website or you send it off to a coder who does all the coding for you. And they'll plug it all in for you. You don't even have to code it yourself. All right. See kind of how long it might take a website to get into place. Mm -hmm. And there's two different types. You can either do all the designing aspect of the website, or you can do all the coding of the website, or you can be one that does both. It's up to you and what you prefer. I kind of like doing both. I like to see it from beginning to end. And if I get frustrated, I hire somebody to finish it because then I get frustrated. All right. So any questions? Everybody's still good. You're all with me. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you're evaluating that site for a redesign, you got to consider those three questions, right? So what's the goal of our site? Who is our target audience? How is the user supposed to accomplish this goal? Okay. Are there things on this site that are working well right now? Now, some of these bad sites, there's not a single thing on there that's worth keeping. And that is okay. But on some of them, there are some things that are working for them. And you do want to keep those things. What are the problems that you want to address with your redesign? Now, here's what was making me laugh on some of your responses. Because you didn't like the site, you were trashing the whole site. And I know these sites because a lot of them have been turned in multiple times by the, the different people over the last four years. And I was getting tickled because, like, once you determined you didn't like a site, you were trashing the hell out of it. And I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Yes, there's some bad functionality to it. But, but there are some things that do work it within it. So you need to reconsider some of these things too. Is there an asset the business has that it's not using? You have to think about that too, because I'm telling you right now, if there's a cookie store nearby that delivers, that has warm cookies and they offer delivery and it's not on their website, y'all could have warm cookies right now. 
I'm just saying. When I go to Texas, when I have to work in Dallas, Texas, my class in Texas always had warm cookies. I kid you not, because that was the only place I knew that would deliver warm cookies to my location. But if that ever happened to you, y'all were getting warm cookies. I'm just saying. What is the brand of the current site that you're on? Do you think it needs a refresh? Is it the brand that's causing the problem? Do you want to preserve elements of that brand on the new site? Does anybody know of Tanner's in Greenville? It just recently shut down. It's been around since like 1920-something. The orange, yeah. So their logo was very old, right? It's from the 20s, all right? But that's what, was, that's what it was known for. I'm not going to take away the logo because people knew that logo. Now, am I gonna refresh everything else around it? Heck yeah, it needs an update. But the logo itself I'm gonna keep because now at this point, it's very retro. That's kind of cool with it, right? But if they were still in business, I would say, let's update your website, let's update the look of the store, but we're gonna keep the logo. But there are some places that the logo smokes so bad that I'm gonna say, your logo is what's bringing you down. Inkies, does anybody know Inkies and Inkly? Okay. I, I harp on them every time. I love Inkies. Their food is amazing. Stacy, the owner, she got it. Hmm. But when they first came to town, nobody knew they were a Philly cheesecake place because their logo looks like a tattoo parlor. I would have them redo their logo. It looks like a tattoo parlor. I'm just saying. All right. So sometimes the logo does not fit the business and you have to talk to the client about that. And then the other thing you have to think about is what are the client's competitors doing? So keep this in mind when you're redesigning your site. What are their competitors doing? How can we up our game to outdo them? And what is the overall persona the client wants to portray? And does the website match that? So. If my website looks very formal, very professional, but you come to my office and I'm in like, I'm in what I'm wearing today, you know, combat boots, jeans and a t-shirt. And I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And you're standing there in a suit because my website made it look like we're very profesh. It's not gonna go off very well, right? We're gonna make our website to match our persona that we have in office. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we start creating our mood boards, which you will start today, the board style is going to be the overall personality of the client's organization. You've got to think about them. Are they going to respond more fa favorably to like a loose, um, creative or strict or formal approach? So some, like if I go to Graphic Cal, I could be very loose with my mood board to them because they're creative minds all right but if i go over to let's say bmw i can't go to them with a very loose board i'm gonna have to go to them with a very constructed board laying out exactly in detail everything we're going to do and what it's going to look like because they're not very creative they're not very imaginative they're not going to think the same way as creative minds think. You understand? Creative minds, and this blew my mind the first time. I mean, completely like I went oh, the first time I realized it. Do you know that most people who are not creatives do not think in color? They don't think in voices. They don't think in narratives. They don't have songs playing in their heads all day. Did y'all realize that? There's no visuals in their head. There's just thoughts. That's it. Whereas, like, I'm literally playing a Kesha song in my head right now as I'm talking to you. I kid you not. All right. And it's constantly, there's always a song in my head. And there's always, like, in my mind, I'm playing out, like, what's going to be happening later in my house because me and my kids are probably going to get into a, a wrestling match later. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I have these visuals and then like over here there's a song and then over here there's a visual of me and my kids wrestling and me winning because I'm I'm like that person I'm not going to lose to my kids like they're going to have to learn to fight and then over here I'm having a conversation with my husband about how I'm going to win what we're going to do for dinner and I've got to figure out you know my strategy for how we're going to win for dinner but most people don't think like that most people would sit in here and not think at all except for what I'm saying How many of y'all are thinking about other things than what I'm talking about? Right? It's okay. You can raise your hand. I get it. I'm a creative mind too. We don't think like that. Majority of the people you talk to don't think like us. And you have to be aware of that. So when you start going, oh, I have this grand idea. So I'm thinking like bright colors and tropics. Those other people are like, what? They're not thinking like we are. They're not thinking palm trees and sandy beaches. And they're thinking stand up their ass and crabs. You know, they're not thinking like we are. So you have to keep that thing, you have to keep those things in your mind. I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. Your contents are going to have to show these things. So you're going to have color palettes, typographical type. We can't say this word like 500 times earlier. So we're just going to skip it. You're going to have to have typography examples. You're going to have textures, patterns, photographs that might kind of meet the ideas that you have. You're going to have other things like button styles, maybe some icons to kind of give them an example of like the look you're wanting to go for, um, some menu choices, logos, any, anything that's going to give them an example of what you are thinking about. And then you have to determine how much your client might need to see. Creative minds don't need to see as much because they're going to run with a small idea you have and go off the deep end with you. They're going to jump in both feet first. My best friend, Casey, spit an image of me. Me and her are like two peas in a pod. I can throw one concept at her. She's going to dive right in with me. She doesn't care. My analytical friend over here is going to bucket everything I say because she cannot think on the same level as me. Right? We're going to fight. I, I can guarantee you nine times out of ten, She's my best friend. We're going to fight. I'm going to say, hey, I really think we should paint this wall. I'm going to do a mural. Why would you do that? Because it'll be beautiful. But well, that's stupid. No, it's not. My kids will love it. But what kind of paint are you going to use? Because they'll start feeling, don't you worry about that. I'll figure that out. What kind of mural are you going to do? Because they're going to grow out of it in two years. No, they're not. Because it's going to be badass. Don't worry about that. You don't even know how to paint like that. You don't know that, right? This this is going to be my friend barking in my ear over here. My friend Casey's already already over here has already bought paint brushes. Like she's already gone to Hobby Lobby, got all the stencils we need. Doesn't have a clue what we're doing, but she's bought all the things, mm -hmm. right? She is full hundred percent on board. Probably has paint in my carpet already, right? She's down. It. She's down for the ride. She doesn't care. She drove six hours. For me. This one who lives like 30 minutes from me is probably grabbing the paintbrushes from us going, you guys are stupid. What are you doing? It's going to be fine. This person cannot see the vision. We can. So you have to think about that when you're working with people. These people are not going to see your vision until you literally lay it out in freaking front of them on a piece of paper and say, look, it's right here. And then they're going to go, oh, that's beautiful. No shit. I've been saying that this whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> Thanks, creative minds, you know. So you have to think like that for them. So here are some ideas. These are mood boards that you can do. So some people do the minimalist type mood boards. Not one of my favorites, but I'm also not a minimal, minimalist type person, okay? My home might like might look like this, but my art room does not, by any means, look like this, okay? So, you're going to focus on the tone and feeling. You're going to include examples of types of images that would be used. Your palette's going to Im imply the type of imagery. Your typography is going to be represented in the headings and links that you're including. For some clients, this is going to be enough. Like a realtor, this would be enough for them. 
okay? Especially if this site is going to be simply undergoing a very small refresh. Now, a minimalist plus, this is where you're gonna kind of maybe emphasize a tone and feeling, but you're gonna add a touch more color. It's not gonna be as muted. You're gonna have a little bit more imagery that has some variety. You're gonna include some textures. And then your typography samples are gonna be a little bit more specific to the type of site. So if you're gonna do like sandy beaches, your typography is gonna be a little bit more exotic, okay? Your detailed infor informal, this is more my style. There are gonna be more specifics on the colors, textures, textures, typography, illustrations, and photos. Still provides a strong sense of look and feel, but it's gonna be well organized and practical and it requires less imagination from the client, which means less back and forth for you. Because I care for y'all so much. This is coming from experience. Trust me. But it also maintains a little bit of a creative spark where you still have some freedom. Okay. This is another one of my favorite. The loose formal covers all the elements of the design. It's less about creativity and kind of provides some more concrete examples. And it really focuses on your colors, your icons, your typography, you know, buttons, text fields, things like that. You can kind of start getting an idea of what the site would look like here without it being like a full site. But you're starting to kind of lose that feeling in the tone. Okay, you kind of see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Now, this actually works for people like corporations, BMW type people. A detailed formal, it's highly formalized. It's about specifics rather than the feel. You're gonna have cover, it's gonna cover like colors, typography, textures, some design elements, and it's gonna be more appropriate for some businesses, okay? Kind of see the differences popping up with like your informal versus your formals. Okay, now some people actually really like this one. I I actually do like this one too, but I kind of get this one mixed up sometimes because then you kind of go back and you do your wireframe and that can confuse your clients. I don't use this one as often. So this is what we call a mock-up formal. This demonstrates elements as they would appear on a site. So this is also highly formalized. But you can already feel the tone um, based on the design. And this is also great for businesses that are doing a refresh, but still keeping their overall layout. And this is also a possible interim step between your first mood board iteration and a full mock-up. Okay, kind of see that? All right, everybody with me so far? Let me show you the one I despise. And I'm begging you, please never, ever, 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 Use this one, I beg of you. I don't mind Pinterest. This is how I think. Yeah, that's like my brain and my Pinterest board. Yeah, so I'm literally, I have to go in three weeks and speak at a, um, con a a conference for all the technical schools in South Carolina mm -hmm. and I'm speaking for 50 minutes but if you could see my notes this is how my notes look they're scattered they're all over the place and right now I'm trying to formalize them so I can put my powerpoint together because they're asking for my powerpoint by next week but in my brain and on paper this is what my notes look like I'm just going to get in trouble because like when I have an idea or like just an apartment or something you're like bouncing it's like I have like the name, like sketch, and like I got, I think like an Easter pass, and like I had a big pass, mm -hmm. and then I was like, draw it later. Like, okay, well, this symbolizes that. It's a great that time. Part of the symbolism also symbolizes this, and then I'm also going to use this material, but only if I can get to know you. You're brainstorming out loud. Yeah, but like on paper, and it yeah. looks like drama. 
Yeah. On my paper. That's what my paper looks like right now, but in words. Yeah. 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 I, it, my page is so far, it's like five pages of word vomit like this, where scattered thoughts everywhere, and I'm trying to form it into a formalized. So please, I'm begging you, don't do this to me. Don't send me this because I'm going to get lost in it. This is actually very overwhelming for a lot of your clients, too. So I beg of you, don't do it. Now, tools that you can use to create your mood board. You can use Canva, Photoshop, Illustrator. I personally love Illustrator. Photoshop, I mean, sorry, uh, PowerPoint, Pixlr, Adobe Spark. And then some well-done websites are on this PowerPoint. Y'all can go to them. Another thing you can do, let me show you. I used Pinterest to get my thoughts together because I'm kind of scattered brain. So I had to create a logo for a diner not too long ago. So this is where I went to get inspiration and I pulled up a lot of diners that I wanted to kind of, I wanted my diner to go like to look like. Based on this, what do you think I did with my logo? Yep, I did a 50s retro feel. The inside of the place would have been checkers, yeah, for sure. My logo did not have checkers in it, though. I was trying to pull it up earlier, but my window wouldn't open. I would show you my logo if I could find it. My logo is very similar to this, but the whole piece is um, like a rectangle shape with the diner letters going across and the name Betty is in cursive. It was Betty's diner. So, but yeah, it's very retro. I did uh, red, teal, and yellow. So that kind of gives you the right feel of what I was trying to do, right? That's kind of what you're going to do as well. <laughs> I don't think, let me see if it'll let me in there now. Because if it does, I might even have my mood board where I put it all together. Yeah, here it is. Hold on. Maybe as slow as I'll get up. Yeah, see? So that's how my logo ended up looking. And then my mood board I did apparently is not connected. But I had like a board in here where it showed you like I had to do my hex numbers and all that of like what colors I was going to use. But you kind of see how that would go. You're going to do the same thing, but instead you're going to do it with a website. So what you guys are going to do is on a sheet of eight and a half by 11 or similar. You could do a square if you wanted to. Um, you're going to put the name of the website you're redesigning, a proposed color palette with at least three colors, and you need to include the name of the colors or the hexadecimal code for each one. You know, that's that hashtag and then like the six letters or numbers that it includes. An example of the typeface you want to use for the heading, an example of the typeface you want to use for the body type, and then three 
representative photos or illustrations that give us a concept of what you want the site to feel like. It doesn't have to be images of websites. It just needs to be images of the type of things you're wanting them to feel like. So if you're doing, you know, um, a website for vacation stuff, you might do things like mountain, mountains or beaches or something like that or whatever. If you're doing a redesign for um, somebody throw out one of the ones you're reading. A fashion website, you might put up different pictures of certain runways, fashion type things. Okay. Now, once you're done with that, you can add more images if you want to. You're going to write a brief statement in the assignment comments explaining why you chose what you chose. And then you're going to save your mood board as a JPEG or a PDF and attach it to the assignment. All right. Any questions for me? Yes, no, maybe. Is everybody pretty confident with this? All right. Let me know if you have any questions, but you can either do that for the rest of the class now, or it's not going to be due until before class on Thursday. Do you have time to work on it now, or you can just wait and work on it before class? It's your bad website. The bad website. You have to redo the bad website. Yeah.